Hi, I'm Sean Smith, President and Head Tool Design Engineer for Smith Machine and Tool. Today, I will be going over Smith Machine and Tool's Drawer Press Roller Switching Tool. I'll go over the general components in our tools, how to switch a bearing, and a general maintenance guideline. A drill press roller switching tool is used in a heavy duty drill press. Using a heavy duty drill press is important because it ensures enough force can be applied into the bearing without deflection in the drill press quill or column head of the machine. It is not meant to be used in a typical Harbor Freight or hardware store table mounted drill press. If the tool is used on those drill presses, there is a potential for damaging the tool, the bearing, or the housing due to the lack of rigidity in the machine. You also may not achieve the swedge required for aerospace standards. Let's get into the components of the tool. The SMT Drill Press Roller Swedging Tool includes three main components. The roller swedging tool, the first side base, the second side base. The roller swedging tool consists of a pilot, retainer, guide pin, rollers, main body, and set screw. The first side base is a flat base. It is flat to center the bearing axially within the housing of a part during the first side swedge. The second side base is angled to match the V-groove of a pre-swedge bearing. All Smith Machine & Tool tooling has these components labeled with the bearing number as well. Smith Machine & Tool also offers custom tooling, both stocked as well as made-in-a-day options for various applications. Based on difficult part configurations, such as anti-rotation lugs, tight clearance situations, rib sections, reduced clearance areas, or custom size bearings. Now, I'm going to walk through how to complete a full swedge using the tool. First, ensure the machine is powered off and install the roller swedging tool into the chuck of the machine. Next, place the first side base onto the table of the machine. Adjust the table travel and quill to ensure that a comfortable full stroke of the quill will fully engage the bearing. Turn on the drill press and adjust the RPM to between 200 and 250 RPM. Apply a small amount of grease to the rollers, to the pilot of the roller surging tool, and to the pilot of the first side base. Then, introduce the part to the work envelope, secure the bearing onto the first side base. Ensure the bearing bore is engaged into the pilot of the first side base and perpendicular to the pilot of the roller swedging tool. This achieves proper alignment and won't damage the bearing bore. Lower the quill of the machine and engage the pilot of the roller swedging tool into the bore of the bearing. Make sure a comfortable stroke will be allowed when the machine is running. Next, retract the quill, turn on the machine, prepare for the first side swedge. With the drill press motor running, slowly engage the roller swedging tool into the bearing until contact is made with the rollers of the swedging tool and the bearing race. Apply gradual pressure and aim for a 50 to 70% full swedge. Ensure not to close the gap between the lip of the bearing and the chamfer of the part. If it's closed, you may not be able to re-swedge the bearing or the bearing could be swedged off center. Once a 50 to 70% gap has been achieved, Retract the roller swedging tool, replace the first side swedge base with the second side angled swedge base, and apply a small amount of grease to the race of the bearing. Next, replace the part onto the pilot of the second side swedge base and perform another swedge in which you produce a 90 to 100% full swedge. Retract the roller swedging tool using the second side swedge base, flip the part and perform a 100% swedge. Now, this side is complete and is checked with a 5,000 feeler gauge. Flip the part again and perform the final swedge to the face until you achieve a 100% swedge and the feeler gauge is also met. Finally, clean the grease from the face of the bearing and the roller swedging process is complete. You've now completed swedging a bearing using the drill press roller swedging tool. When you're finished using the drill press roller swedging tool for your job, you should take the tool apart and clean it. Following these proper general maintenance steps is important because it both extends the life of the tool and ensures quality for the next use. 
Between each lot of parts that are used with the first side and second side base, the tool should be cleaned of any fod or debris. Ensure there are no nicks or dings that may cause damage to future parts. Now, the roller sweating tool should be disassembled and cleaned between job lots usage by removing the set screw, the guide pin, retainer, rollers, and the pilot from the roller swedging body. The roller swedging body should be periodically polished on a lathe with maroon scotch brite. Before reassembly, ensure all components are thoroughly cleaned of any microscopic debris or fod. Apply grease to the angled face inside the roller swedging tool before reassembly. To reassemble, insert the wheels into the retainer and reassemble the guide pin, pilot, and retainer wheels into the roller swedging tool body. Snug tight the set screw and ensure free rotational movement by hand of the wheel retainer pilot assembly. That completes how to properly care and maintain your drill press roller swedging tool.